How's it going, everybody? Katie from On The Block Realty. And today I'm going to share with you an overview of the most important housing market statistics you need to know from 2022. We are going to review how the GTA performed in three categories. Number one, the number of sales or transactions in the past year. Number two, the average prices as well as the home price index. And number three, the number of new listings. So right now what we're looking at is a overview comparing the last three years in terms of the number of sales. So these stats are all from the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. And before I get into this, I want to make sure you hang on until the end of this video, because what I'm going to share with you is the two areas in the greater Toronto area that showed a positive price growth number. There were only two um, within this last year for home price index. So stay tuned for that. So right now, what we're looking at is the number of sales. And you can see here that 2020 is the green. So the far left, 2021 is in the middle and 2022 is at the end. And we can see here, obviously, that the number of sales overall for the entire year um, have been down for this past year. So that is a very similar story we've been talking about over the last few months in terms of market updates, and the same story exists as well for December as well as the year overall. If you look at uh, just the summary for the market watch for December, uh, we can see down here in terms of year over year changes, the number of sales is down between negative 44% or uh, up to negative 53%. So overall, the number of sales has been quite low and it's been a much quieter year, especially the last part of this year as interest rates have gone up. The next story we want to talk about is just the average prices. And we can see here that the MLS average price from 2020 to 2022, um, we are down um, starting around September. We started trending down from an average price perspective versus 2021. However, we are still up overall from 2020. So it'll be interesting to see how things fair over this next year, but currently we're up versus two years ago, but we have been trending down the last few months um, from an average price perspective. Going into average prices on the overview here, you can see for um, December, base basically broken down. You've got the 416 and the 905. 416 for the detached is negative 4%. Semis is negative 13.8%, townhouses is negative 11.9%, and condos are actually up 1.4%. If you go to the 905 region, um, it's, it's very different. So you can see here the detached market is down quite a bit, not negative 16.4%. Semis is similar at just under minus 16%. Townhouses are down 13.4% and the condo segment is down 5%. So we can see here that the story is kind of making sense because as we saw over COVID, there was a lot of demand for people to get more space outside of the city. And as things have changed, as interest rates have gone up, people aren't able to, number one, afford the homes that are larger and detached, but also a lot of people recognize that they wanted to move back into the city and maybe their purchase that they bought an hour outside of the Toronto area isn't making much sense anymore. And that's why we're seeing the prices go down more so for those segments, especially in the 905 area. Um, next, what we're going to look at is the... Finally, we'll see here, uh, this last paragraph is talking just about the average price for 2022 overall. It's up 8.6% versus 2021. So we finished off the year at an average price point of $1,189,850, up 8.6%. Now, this is a narrative that you might see in the news, which is a positive spin on things. But as we've seen over the last few months, things have been going down and you will see that happen over the first few months of 2023 as well, where the average price will likely be a negative number overall um, versus uh, the year prior. Next, we want to look at active listings. And you can see here in this chart down below, active listings 
is considerably higher versus this time last year. And that's because it's taking a lot longer for properties to sell. That leads us into the property days on market, which is this last field here. PDOM stands for property days on market. And average right now is 40 versus 19 that we saw in 2021. So as promised, I'm going to share with you the only two markets that saw a positive home price index number. But first, let's re review the worst performing markets in the GTA. So this is outside of Toronto, but you can see here that Milton, Clarington, and Halton Hills all had the worst performing year-over-year -year home price index versus the year prior. So Halton Hills came in at negative 16.09%. Milton was 18.65% negative. And then if you go down to Durham region, Clarington was 18.21%. In terms of best performing markets, York region came in very strong. Richmond Hill saw just negative 2.41%, which is right here. We saw Markham at negative 3.64% and Vaughn at negative 6.18%. So those were quote unquote, the best performing markets. If you go into Toronto, we're first going to do the worst performing, and then I'm going to share with you the best performing, which includes those positive two uh, areas. So in terms of worst performing, I'm going to show you a map here because that'll give you a better idea of what we're talking about. So C11, which is right in this area, Flemington Park, Thorncliff Park, it saw a negative 20.18% uh, finishing number. C9, which is right down here, Rosedale, uh, more uh, Rosedale over here. Um, we saw a negative 19.81% decline. And then E10, so out in the East End over here, uh, West Hill, Scarborough area saw a negative 18.94% HPI uh, versus last year. All right, here we go. Best performing. So there are only two markets that came out on a positive note. C14, which is up here in the Willowdale area, came out at 3.97% on the positive, which is great. And then C1, which is down here, came in at just over zero, which is 0.12%. Now this area primarily consists of the condos, um, condo market um, in the waterfront, Niagara area, Trinity Bellwoods. Obviously there's also other homes other than condos, but that's a primarily condo saturated market. And finally, C7 was in the negatives, but it also did quite well in comparison to the other markets. And that came in at negative 1.58%. And that's also close to the west side of Willowdale um, and that kind of area, North York. So those are the best and worst performing markets and an overview of 2022. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at Get on the Block. And if you love this video and you found it helpful, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates for your 2023 real estate market. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.